What's going on guys, it's your boy CMB. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, smash that like button, and let's get into this one really quickly. Now guys, uh, I am still out here in Tulum, Mexico, and I did promise you guys while I was here, I would try to drop content when time allowed me to do it. And here I am guys, it's the third day out here and I'm dropping another video for you guys. Now I hope you guys can hear me clearly. Uh, my microphone is not charged, so I'm doing this without a mic, so maybe the audio quality is not the best. But anyway, I want to talk a little bit about Canelo Alvarez. Now, if you didn't know, uh, Canelo Alvarez is set to return to the ring in next year, May of next year of 2023, which came to a shock uh, to a lot of people, uh, being the fact that he had surgery on his wrist after the Triple G fight. And he said he wanted to take some time off to let his body heal. Uh, he had been, you know, doing a lot of fighting in the last year or so. And honestly, I thought he wouldn't return so soon. I thought maybe he would take some time off, maybe come back in September. But he says he's going to return in May. Now, we were under the impression that the fight in May was going to be against Dimitri Bivol, the light heavyweight, the WBA light heavyweight champion who defeated uh, Canelo Alvarez in dramatic fashion uh, back in May of this year, but he decided to go another route. Uh, he decided to take a tune-up fight between the winner of Zach Parker and uh, John Ryder, who I think actually fights this weekend. And of course, you know, a lot of people are screaming foul. Uh, some people are saying that, you know, it's a duck move on Canelo's part not to face off against Dimitri Bivol. But is that the case? Uh, the question is, is, is it the right thing for him to do? Uh, take this tune-up fight in a day and age where you have guys like Errol Spence Jr. and uh, now Javante Tank Davis uh, taking these tough fights uh, that aren't really tune-up fights. You know, Errol says he doesn't do tune-up fights. He wants to go into the big fights. And then you have Javante Tank Davis going into a fight with an extremely tough competitor in Hector Luis Garcia, uh, January the 7th, who may even give him a harder time, I, I think, uh, than the fight with Ryan Garcia, who he's set to face off in April, if he even gets past Hector Luis Garcia. Uh, so is this the right move for Canelo Alvarez, being that he's been seen as the face of boxing? And, you know, he's been taking a lot of heat. He you know, he lost to Bivol. Uh, he didn't look that great in the Triple G fight. And now, you know, he's going to be fighting competition uh, like uh, John Ryder and, and Zach Parker. Is that the right move? And to be honest, guys, I, I think that's the right move. Even though the optics look bad, let's face it, if he's going to go into a fight with Dimitri Bivol, he has to be 100% on his game. He has to plug the holes in his game. And I know a lot of people said, well, you know, he was, Dimitri Bivol was too big. He needs to fight at 168. He's too big at 175. Here's the thing, guys. Canelo Alvarez already fight, fought at 175. He captured a title at 175 when he fought Kovalev. And I don't think it was the size that made the difference in the fight with him at Bivol. It was the skill set. It was apparent to me that Bivol had more tools in his arsenal than Canelo Alvarez. You guys know Canelo Alvarez, he likes to load up on his punches. You know, he likes to throw one punch at a time. He doesn't have the best footwork. Uh, he has problems with stamina. We, we saw that in the last fight with Triple G when he, he got tired in that fight as well as the Bibble fight. If he doesn't work on those holes in his game, it's going to be the exact same thing uh, in the first match, whether it's at 175 or whether it's at 168. So I think this is an excellent opportunity for him to plug those holes and, you know, get in get in some good rounds with somebody like Zach Parker or John Ryder before going into a fight uh, with Dimitri Bivol uh, with the same game plan. He can't do that because he can't lose back-to-back -back fights to Bivol like that. That's something that can completely derail his career. Uh, just change the image that he has uh, in the sport of boxing. So he's going to have to be 100%. I think it's the smart thing for him to do as a fighter, uh, but I know a lot of people are going to say, you know, he's ducking 
but you know you have to do things that's going to uh, put you in a position where you're going to be fully prepared for a guy like Bivol. Bivol's a, a damn good fighter. He's going to be hard to beat. Uh, he is very, very technically sound, and he does have, you know, respectable power. But that's my opinion on that, guys. Uh, maybe yours differ a little bit. Uh, you tell me what you guys think about in the comment section. Do you think it's, you know, a good thing for Canelo Alvarez to have uh, a uh, tune-up fight before getting into a fight with Bivol, or do you think it's a duck move? You guys let me know about that in the comment section. It's the CMB. I'll talk to you guys in the next one. And I'm out. Peace.